Um, welcome, folks. Uh, this is our second webinar in a three webinar series. I'm Diane Brancasio. This is my colleague, Justin Schmidt. And we're here to talk to show you a live project, rubber stamps with 3D printed molds. And um, we will have this all posted on our website after, along with a list of materials. So these are the p things that we're going to make today. We're going to design and fabricate custom molds for the stamps, cast the stamps with reusable rubber. Now, to get that, we're going to use Tinkercad to make the mold that's going to have the melted rubber in it. We will be designing or importing some unique shapes and graphics that we can emboss or deboss to make a negative or a positive stamp. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about the place here. This is Professor Harold Doc Edgerton. He's a pioneer in strobe photography and high-speed imaging. And the strobe photograph is in the center, the milk drop, which is an iconic thing. Uh, one of those drops is the next drop coming down, and one of them is it reforming as it goes back up. And the high-speed imaging showing the tennis stroke in the multiple images. You can see where the ball is there. Um, so we are in um, the strobe lab, Doc's lab, and it is really painted black so they could do that kind of imaging here. And the way they did that um, was they'd open the shutter and expose the image with the strobe, close the shutter, get the lights back on, and develop it all in film technology. A lot more things than just being a really good engineer and designer. He was known as a, a great professor that really got along with the students and encouraged them to do a lot of things on their own. He um, would welcome people into his labs. So our makerspace is across the hall and that's what was his electrical engineering lab. But he would welcome students in to do their own personal projects, not just projects to do for a class. So he really had that lab as a makerspace decades before the name came into play. Right now, the Edgerton Center is a home for experiential learning at MIT. We have several different parts. The clubs and teams have another lab uh, and office space a few blocks from campus. And we have student teams like the Solar Electric Vehicle, Driverless, FSAE, um, Formula One Racing, Robo Team, Rocket Team, BattleBots, lots of teams that are there. The Student Project Lab is our makerspace where students can come in and work on uh, personal projects with electronics prototyping, um, you know, wood and plastic prototyping, 3D printer, laser cutter, vital cutter, sewing machine, lots of fun stuff. In, in the picture is a student doing rug tufting, which is something we started doing. Rug uh, we're really lucky to be able to have a student come in and say, I want to run this as an event and just support them to do it. So once again, back to the project, especially in case you just got on and you want to see what are we making today? We're going to design and fabricate custom molds um, for the stamps, those are going to be 3D printed, like you see in the sort of dark green shapes there. We're going to cast those stamps from reusable rubber. We'll be using Tinkercad to create those molds, and we have an easy process for you to follow. We'll bring in the shapes from wherever. If there's something you draw or something you pick up online or something you process from something you picked up online or something you drew. What are some of the skills you're going to be getting and developing using the modeling software in a in a good way to, to use the positives and negatives. And so you'd be using Tinkercad for that. Spatial reasoning to really think of, ah, if this is going to be a stamp, then what's up, what's down? How am I going to see this? You'll use the 3D slicer and 3D printing procedures uh, that you have on your own machine. We're going to assume that you have those capabilities. And we'll be looking into molding and casting techniques with this material called Composi mold, which you can find online, and it's a reusable rubber, uh, casting rubber. Now, you could use another rubber for this as well, but we wanted to use this because when you're done with the project, you can remelt it and reuse it, as it says on the container. There will also be some iteration here on this creative project because you may say, ah, it doesn't look right yet. Let me go try 3D printing that again. So you may want to build that in a little bit of time to iterate on the 3D printed mold. And of course, you can adjust these steps for your own setting by either having maybe a library of images or some of the Tinkercad models already started. But that is that is up to you to make this project harder or easier as you like. 
here's an example project. This is a fifth grade social studies project where the students worked in groups to create stamp collages featuring symbols from major social movements in American history that they studied throughout the year. So a group picked the 1960s civil rights movement. So we have lots of pieces from there, like um, the peace sign and the, uh, the fist, all from demonstrations, from voting, and the we shall overcome sort of uh, the civil rights movement. And the next slide is going to show what you can do with some of these. And this is a collage shown with really, I, I, I love this. This is um, our colleague, Jamie, put this together uh, to, to show a nice version of this. We have a bunch of those. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, if we want to take a moment just to kind of look at what those. Maybe you can like. show some of these. Yeah, we don't have a lot of the stamps Oops. anymore because, as we said. We remolded them. So this is the uh, the vote stamp that was used to make the, the uh, stars and stripes up there. <laughs> and we've got. And this Uber. one is showing, oops, Here, I'll how do I do it? You, it. you hold it. Yeah. Um, sort of the embossing and debossing, depends whether you mean the mold or the actual stamp. But as you can see on here, um, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. You, you need to be careful, how big can I make these features? Um, this isn't a stencil text, but it doesn't have to be because it really would have stuck onto it that way. But what's cool about this is you're using images and really, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. So you can really combine a lot in the color you're going to use to stamp with, as well as all the shape and the detail that you're putting into this. And sometimes a minimalist stamp is going to convey more because you're really boiling it down to its essence. Some possible projects you could do with this, maybe cultural celebrations and holidays could be used in storytelling, making collages or mosaics, kind of like the flag one that we have. You could show scenes and clothing from literature or make repeatable symbols that you're gonna need for say math or English to show something, to chart something or anything that has to do with um, self-expression, social emotional learning, community building, or it's up to you. Last thing before we get to our live demo, so I want to tell you about the tools and materials. So as we said, you'll need, we're using Tinkercad. If you have another modeling program, that's fine. We're going to show it on Tinkercad, 3D printer and slicer and the filament to go along with it. Um, we're using the Composi mold. Where am I facing it here? Um, reusable rubber. Uh, you'll need a microwave and a microwave safe dish, kind of like a, a Pyrex pouring uh, measuring cup or pouring cup and a wood stick that you can use to mix this up. I will tell you, after you heat it up, it really smells bad, but that's only if you go really close to it. Um, then you'll need some adhesive, like double stick tape or craft glue, so you can put your stamp onto the block. The base material, you could actually use the back of the mold itself. So here I have a stamp on one side, and the it's actually on the mold. So now I know what it is that I'm printing. Or you, if you're gonna make multiples of it, like I'm gonna have a lot of the same thing, I'll take some wooden blocks, could be an eraser, a jar lid, anything that you can put these on so you can stick them on. And you'll need some ink pads. So washable ink is just fine. And of course, something to stamp on. So. We'll have some paper, cloth, poster board, whatever it's going to go on. The process that we're going to follow as, uh, and Justin's going to go into this with the live demo, start with your ideation. Come up with your theme. And I, I can't emphasize this enough. Come up with several ways to communicate your idea through graphics, because it may turn out that you just love this idea, but it just isn't going to make a good stamp. So have several ways to communicate that idea so that you could try different stamps. Then this is the part, um, design and print. This is the part where you may need to iterate. So you're gonna get the graphics on it, edit them, pull them into Tinkercad, and then create the 3D printed part. And you may say, ah, it just didn't work out the way I want it. So I'm gonna modify my graphics a bit, maybe 
make just only use part of it, make the lines thicker, whatever you can do. Then we are gonna go to the casting and finishing. So I'm gonna pour the rubber, let it set. This is gonna take a little bit of time. You could put it in the fridge or you could just leave it out for a couple hours to set. And then you're gonna unmold it and put it on the base. So we're also sticking with the social studies theme. And we wanna do something about post-World War II culture. What do you think of that, Justin? Okay, sounds good. All right, so this is the late 40s, 1950s. Mm -hmm. And we have to think about what was going on for the American people, I'm um, saying it in America and not the rest of the world, but at that time. Mm -hmm. So I know some of it was that there was the GI Bill for soldiers coming home where they could get low mortgages and they could, they were building lots of houses in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm from Queens. I'm in one of those houses in the suburbs. And women were encouraged to leave the workforce and stay at home and have lots of babies. That's one thing that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, these are all boring. What Keep else do you remember? Uh, so I remember like Rosie the Riveter was a pretty cool image. So our goal is to make a stamp, right? We want to make yeah, a cool stamp. But let's think of what was happening then so we can put, so I could say something about women in their houses with lots of little babies. Okay. Um, rock and roll music. Yeah. Um, oh, you're talking post World War II, right? Post World War okay. II, TV was big. Uh, yeah, consumerism was on the rise. Cars, cars, cars. were those big. Um, what about movies? Fits. What was in movies that was? Movies. Oh, movies was horror movies, monster movies. It was like That's the right. time of monster movies. So, monster movies were used as a way to to basically have a symbol that represented the fear of like nuclear war. Like Japan used Godzilla to represent like the atomic bomb being dropped on Japan. So why don't we go with Godzilla? Or we could do aliens. Why is it everything you want to do has to do with Godzilla, Justin? He's cute. He's cute. He's Godzilla. You don't want to do anything with rock and roll so music? The um, thing, desegregation. So the interesting thing about Godzilla, though, as a symbol, is Japan morphed him from a symbol of war to kind of an anti-hero in the middle there. And then America took it on and put their own spin on it. I think there's a lot of fun symbolism we can play with with Godzilla. Have you like, done a lot Godzilla? of research on Godzilla? Godzilla? Godzilla. OK, so we're going to do Godzilla. Um, so let's get started here. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to look up Godzilla, uh, pictures. We're going to find a picture for Godzilla. Um, those aren't going to be easy to do stamps out from. But look at how cool this is. Yeah. How are you going to do a stamp? Okay. I guess Maybe you right. can get a silhouette. All right. Let's try Godzilla's silhouette. Or you could, you could just write the word Godzilla. Nah. No, text is dumb. Like no seriously, hey, we're making we're making a stamp. I could just write Godzilla. Why am I going to use the stamp? Okay, um, so let's look at some of these. There's a lot of options. So what does it need to do? It needs to be identifiable. Like hey, it could... yeah, don't make it look like a dinosaur. Yeah. Like and how did the Japanese draw Godzilla uh, first? So the original guy. Let's see. Can we find original guy? This is original guy. How about this one? That one looks familiar to me. I don't know about the detail. What do you think about the detail? Oh, like, look at all these look sketchy at lines. He must have had a good dentist. I don't think it's going to make a good stamp, though. Okay. The picture's not going to work. This isn't going to work. Well, we'll save it because it's a good idea. Maybe we can get it simpler. What else do you have? How about, oh, no. Let's see. Um, what if we did that? Um, that kind of looks like a wolf howling at the moon. <laughs> also, what city is that? Uh, that could be. We need. We need to add some sort of symbol that's going to make it clear that we're talking about Japan. Um, okay. Let's see. That's silly. That could work though. What do you think of that? Love it. Except uh, he has a bunch of flowers growing off his back. All right. How about uh, this one? I think this is a good compromise. He's got like some small details. Yeah, and then I could easy. add the guitar. Okay, you can add the guitar after. So we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna right click, save image as. This is saving as a .avif. Now that's a terrible file format that your students are probably not gonna be able to work with. So I'm gonna say cancel and I'm gonna do my favorite trick, which is to just do a screenshot. So for me, I'm on a PC, I do window key, shift S. Now let's get the stamp actually ready because we need, you know, in the example the teacher gave us, we have a mold here. It's got like a, a space to fill with the goop, and then it's got the embossed or debossed text. So here we go. So now we're going to start building this. So I'm going to grab a regular old box. I'm going to put this out on my work plane. So we're going to make this. I'm going to go with 50 millimeters. This is millimeters um, by 
50. So I'm gonna make it uh, 10 millimeters tall. So I'm gonna bring this till it says 10. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna make another one. And this one is gonna be two millimeters smaller. So I'm gonna drag it out till it's 48. And I'm gonna use the align tool up here. And if I hit these buttons, I can get that right centered on the base. This is sitting on the work plane and this is sitting on the work plane. So if I group them together, I'm gonna to cut a hole straight through. Let's bring this up, one, two, three, four. You see on the right, I can see how far I'm bringing it up. And then I make it a group. So now we've got our box ready to go. And now I'm gonna add Godzilla. Diane, what am I doing? Where's Godzilla? Um, you've got to turn it into an SVG. Oh. What you're gonna do on Tinkercad is import an SVG and it will bring it in with some thickness, but you saved it as uh, a screenshot. So it's yeah. probably a PNG or a JPEG. Right, what do I do with it? Uh, oh, well, pick we're SVG. gonna go to pick SVG. Pick SVG. Okay, so I just grab that screenshot, bring it in. So this is gonna take my my picture, which was a, uh, a bunch of dots, right? And it's gonna trace it and create some paths for me. And those paths are what Tinkercad can use to create a 3D model. So an SVG, I'm sure most of you know, but an SVG is a scalable vector graphic and it is scalable perfectly. A PNG or a JPEG is a series of dots, so they're pixels. So when we put it into this program, pick SVG, it converts from one to the other. What we like about this very simple website, which has been around for like quite a while, um, is that it has very few filters. You've got about six or seven different things, interior or exterior. So when yeah. we choose interior, it fills it in as a filled in SVG, so it's one big solid line. And then we can do our details can be great or strong. They're both pretty darn good. So, so I'm going to go with this one. It's kind of a little in between. It's got it softens some of the lines a little, which I think will be easier yep. for molding our stamp. So I'm going to download it. And yep. then I can go back to Tinkercad and pull that in. Important. So the different filters on Pick SVG, as Justin was saying, some of them soften the features and just sort of eliminate some really small ones. So it's a nice way of really soft focusing on something. Here's Godzilla. That's how big it will come in and now we have to start scaling. Yep, hold down shift and this will bring us down. Now he's not on here to hit C to turn on cruise mode and then I can just drag him and he'll be right on top of the stamp there. Mm -hmm. Okay, there he is, cool. but he's sitting right on top. Yep, he's sitting right on top, which is not what we want. We want to embed him into the surface. So what I'm going to do is make this taller. Right now he's only you know less than two millimeters. So I'm going to actually make the... Let's go with, uh, Could be anything. I'll make it four or whatever. Okay. He's four millimeters. Now I'm going to bring him down two millimeters. There we go. So now I have to make him a hole. There we are. Okay. So I want to add one more thing. I want to give him a little something to say that we're talking about Japan in Godzilla and not the US. So I'm going to put a circle to represent the rising sun of Japan. Okay. okay. Two millimeters down, group it. Export it, go ahead and print it, and through the magic of already making one, there's Godzilla. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna go and get my goop and microwave it. So this is what the composite mold looks like there after you you've used it for a while. Oh, thank you. Um, and it's got some bubbles because we may have overheated it a little because we were experimenting, mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty thick. It's kind of got like a honey-like viscosity when it's new. Uh, you want to heat it to about 130 to 160 degrees until it's nice and runny. Um, you want to avoid touching it as much as you can because it's very sticky and hot. Um, it's not a problem if you do. It will come off your hands fairly easy. It washes up oh. with water. Um, Diane can show you what it looks like when it's yeah. cooled. Here's when I am I have the cooled stuff. I'm just holding it in my hand. Yeah. Uh, but this is like taffy. Okay. It will really stick to Okay. Is so that now, warm right now? Yep. Here's oh, wow. our Godzilla, and we're going to do our best to pour it. It might not be quite warm enough, but you'll get the idea. All right, so here we go. If you could smell this, too. It's such a great smell. It's kind of like when you put new brakes on the car. Oh, yeah, yeah. it does have that rubbery smell, but it's also got this, like, bio kind of smell to it. But it's 100% uh, food safe. It's non-toxic. It washes off really easily. When it cools, it peels off, like, like so easy. It's really satisfying to peel. Okay. Um, so we could go. take this, uh, yeah, it wasn't quite hot enough, but you yeah, got the idea the here. Idea. Uh, and there are other molds, like you can get EcoFlex, that would work just fine. EcoFlex like 0050 or 0030, a couple of different durometers of that. 
And there's a, a number of them that we've used for candy molds that are food safe. And that's another brand too. So you can just look at two part molding compounds. But this one is fun, like I said, because it does turn into this afterwards that I can just pull it off and touch it and it's not bothering me. Uh, so how long is that going to take to set? So it would take maybe like half an hour, depends on how cool the room is. You want to just kind of let it heat, it, let it cool down until like when you pick it up, it doesn't really feel super warm and you can touch it. It can still be a little bit warm and you'll be able to tell when you touch it if it's solid or not. Um, you can see that it's uh, it, on there, it's too hot. Do you, do you have to worry about <laughs> air bubbles in the bottom? Yes. So this is a bad example because this stuff has been worked so much and it's got so many bubbles in it. But normally you'll be able to tell if you have bubbles and you can go in with either, they recommend a toothpick on their website, but I was using a sewing pin to just go in and kind of work those bubbles out. Better thing to do is to make your design so that you're minimizing the damage done by bubbles. So if you have stuff where if it has a little notch cut out of a corner, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, that's better than trying to be like, oh no, my A has a bubble and you can't read it. You'll see in Oops. our examples that if you use fresher um, composite mold, it it um it's clear. So you can actually see where the bubbles are. Yeah. This right now was not quite hot enough, but the one now you can see, I'm gonna try to turn it in the angle of the light here, but I can see straight through yep. and I can tell where the bubbles were and there aren't any in there. So this is about Dilla ready to go. You're gonna you pull them out? Question in the mm -hmm. chat. Any kind of filament or is it better to use PLA? Hmm. Good question. I, I haven't experimented with different materials yet. We only print PLA typically in our shop. Um, but it, yeah, so far it has not stuck to PLA at all. Um, except for when it's hot. When it's hot, it sticks to literally everything. Uh, Diane, do you want to have yeah, fun? Yeah, Composite Mold Original. I just wanted to say that in here because they have yeah. other versions, but this is just their original. And um, we only learned about it a little while ago, so we had a lot of fun with it. Do you want to peel it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. No, I can just sort of grab it at the edge and yep. peel it out. Yep. Oh, yeah. This is like... Oh, that one's hard. coming out good. Yeah. So it's going to feel like it's going to rip, but I haven't had it rip yet. It's been really, really good. Oh, I work with EcoFlex a lot. Wow. All right. Pretty cool. So now we can see Mr. It, Mr. Zilla. Okay, wow, goes. that's better. What would be kind of fun is to put it on the back yeah, of this. Oh, sorry. So, I just took the mold, which is here, and I'm flipping it onto the back. And now when I go and stamp it, I'll have Godzilla facing to the right, which is just as it shows me. Well, it's flipped on here, but it's going to be facing that direction over here. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing this guy is, because when I flip him, he's facing there. So that's awesome. Now you could, <laughs> I was sticking it on. It's actually going to stick pretty well to this, yeah. but using the double stick tape might be a little nicer. All right. So to get stamping, so we got a couple options. We have these um, not very washable ink pads. Uh, I'm not crazy about these for these kind of projects because they have raised edges and no, they're hard to get it? Godzilla on there, uh, or sorry, your stamp on there, especially when it is this large. Uh, but the ink tends to be more vivid and a little easier to work with. Uh, we do have some of these very inexpensive uh, craft stamp pads here that are, um, simple, cheap little water-based inks. They wash off really easily. However, they tend to dry up very easy. And I've had a very hard time getting these to rehydrate. Um, the good thing is they're dirt cheap, so it's not a huge loss, um, but let's try this. I think we got a purple maybe or dark blue. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do a couple passes and I can kind of check as I go. It's not picking up a ton from this ink pad. Oh, there we go. It's getting there. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay. And now one other thing you can do, cut these corners off. I find that the corners tend to like rise up a little and it'll be really hard to not get ink off of here onto your paper. Um, so if you chop them off just with scissors before you mount it, or um, I guess you could theoretically do it in the the Tinkercad model too. I hadn't thought okay. about that. All right, here's our first stamp, ready? No. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> It came out really good. Now, Diane, what do I do if I want to change the color? Well, you're going to have to clean it off. 
But now, now is where it gets kind of interesting. Can I just do another one Absolutely. next to it? So I'm gonna put one here, Let's and it's this. pretty good. Now I have a lighter color, which I kind of like. Oops. Um, so to clean this off, this material is water soluble. So I don't want to wash the whole thing in water. I'd rather just get um, a wet paper towel and use isopropyl alcohol to get that going. So I'm going to use a lint-free wipe and I'm going to take that off here. Oh, and wow. a lot of that's coming right off. If I use water, it's going to get gooey. Now, of course, if I make a mistake and I really have to do that, as long as I take it off, maybe if I rinse it in water and then very quickly stamp it a bunch of times. But as you can yeah. see, I've already gotten most of that off. I just have to get it from the, the sun. And that is pretty much ready for the next color. What's color? Oh, wow. What's color number two? Um, red. Uh, how about orange? Oh, wait, green. I'm green because green Godzilla yeah. is kind of green in my world. Hey. hey. That's how much fun it is. And we have lots of others here that you're going to see in some of our projects. Um, we made some of them kind of big. This is like three by four inches. Um, some real fun ones. I'll see if you can guess who it is in this one. This is just taking a picture, a color picture, and then putting it in PIC SVG. Um, you, you might guess what famous pop star that is. And you might uh, also know what famous litigator this is. So judge. Oh. God, how many stamps can I get with one 20 ounce tub? Love it. The one I have is a 10 ounce tub. This is easily good for a dozen. No, not is. at once. No, you're going to get at once. Honestly, from my experimenting over the last couple of days, I think that'll get you. If, if they're large, like RBG over here, okay, you're going to get like four. So if you're doing a bunch of various sizes, you're going to lose a lot of this in the process, not permanently, but during the process to sticking to your measuring cup and all that stuff. Oh, uh, so sticking so, to the measuring cup. Yeah, that's I a think good one. realistically you're going to get, I don't know, I would say maybe, well, what am I doing? Maybe so, half a dozen. Yeah, so to make 10 stamps in a 20 ounce tub, you should be able to do it. Yeah, yeah I think that's fair. Especially once you get the process down a little better and you're not <laughs> just making messes. Okay, okay. Here are our project examples. We have three or four project examples here. This first one here is the project is a civics collage. Okay, some of the ideation here. So civics is the study of the rights and responsibilities of a citizen. Uh, so the Bill of Rights, now that shows me a lot of really good icons. Um, I really like like the one there for the Ninth Amendment, uh, a whole bunch of really good ones like the, you know, the, even the, the, the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment. I mean, they just look pretty cool, not, just some pretty good uh, emojis. Now we look also at the Noun Project. Um, there you can get like a one-year membership for $20. As an educator, make sure you like find the educator thing and you can get some of these other ones like that Capital, US Capital. That's from the Noun Project where they make very simplified silhouettes and they're all royalty-free, license-free. You can just use them for educational purposes with absolutely no trouble. Um, showing a ballot box or an American flag, some stars, just saying vote. Okay, so I've got lots of ideas there. Let's move ahead. So this one, we did make the vote in, in both the positive and negative. Made the mold shape, put the graphics in, made the shapes. And those shapes all came from um, Tinkercad itself. It has text and it has lots of shapes you can pull in, like stars and hearts and polygons. And casting it and finishing it. Stamping. Okay. All right. So this one was fun. We were uh, noticing that we were getting a lot of uh, humanities in this project. And we were like, how can we get the math teachers in on the fun? Uh, and I remembered when I was in the, the middle school in Watertown, we did tessellations. We had them lining the, the hallways. And it was always cut out a thing on a, on a um, index card and then draw it over and over again and then color it in. So. I thought that would be a really good way to, to have an easily ideated thing to do this stamp for. So here's a bunch of different examples of uh, using the the parts to trap method where you kind of cut a thing into four pieces and flip them around, uh, finding some shapes that looks just really awful and some that looks a little more interesting, and then settling on one that actually works. 
And what's cool about that is you can just cut them out and keep drawing them and cut them by hand until yeah. you like one and then say, okay, this is the one I want to use. Exactly. And once I figured out which one I wanted to go with, uh, it reminded me kind of a com of a comic book thing. So I wanted to do a little bit of playing with this. So I actually took a picture of just the white paper on a black background. In this case, it was just a mouse pad. I imported the photo into Pick SVG. So all I had to do was in, I used Google Photos for this, but you can use um, Google Slides. You can use any sort of online photo editor or Photoshop. I just jumped up the contrast and uh, made it so it was a little more black and white, didn't have as much gray in there. And then uh, Pick SVG did a, a wonderful job of getting it without any sort of problems to fix later. Uh, I brought that into a program we like called Vector, and I just added some text. Uh, and I had to play around with the text a little bit and think about words that were short and find fonts that had really big letters with big counters and spaces so that uh, my stamp would come out hopefully good. Uh, and then I made the I made the thing. So I did the molding. I have it somewhere. Now, the, the sure. cool part about this is the clear acrylic. We need the clear acrylic so you could line it up and you could see where one yeah. piece is going to go with the next one. Yeah. Now, could you have cut your whole see stamp right out? This stuff is very resilient to cutting. Ah, yes, it's hard to cut. So I was able to like kind of chop the corners off, but I had to do a little sawing. Oh boy, uh, okay. So you're better off to avoid it. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to do this sample pretty easily and it has a kind of cool pop art kind of vibe. Uh, and you can see the alignment on the on the left. Okay, we have another example here for International Women's Day, where we're celebrating women's achievements, promoting gender equality, and inspiring other women. Here are several of the women that we thought about that we wanted to include, and um, tried a lot of these, lots of different techniques using Pick SVG a lot, and using uh, just just changing the backgrounds on things. You can use remove.bg or any remove background thing and anything where you can change the contrast or the brightness so that it, the, the light parts get washed out and the dark parts come back stronger. So let's see what we got. So those are a lot of the ideas played around with it. So there's a remove.bg so we could just get uh, Amelia Earhart. And then instead of doing um, the fill-in the way we did Godzilla, we used the outline or the um the, the edge filter in pick svg and that's gonna be a tricky stamp but it it worked out yeah and for this one uh we were showing how e how easy it is to just remold these things you just throw it in the microwave yeah. and yeah so this one's just it's not so much playing with pattern but you know you, each student gets to make a stamp and then add it to the the collage here yeah uh somebody asked in the chat about uh if they if you, how long you can keep the stamps around they will stick around for a while. Um, they get a little stiff and they get a little shrunken. Um, again, I think it's because of the evaporation. Uh, but we didn't take care to do that. So I think if you put them in a little Ziploc bag, it's probably going to help a ton. Okay. So now we can talk about why we love the project. Okay. What's other than it being fun, which is yeah. last but not least, um, we love the fact that it's a reusable material. Because if you look online, you'll see that this is probably like 35 bucks to get the bigger size of this. So I only want to pay that once, yeah. <laughs> not a couple of times. And so, we're using the we're using graphics. So it's getting people away from writing mm -hmm. and text and really in the world of um I mean lots of people are using emojis for tons of things now, but to sort of make your own is kind of cool too. Really, really demystifies how do they get those images when you see you can do it for yourself. Pretty easy to adjust or differentiate for various levels. Now you could do that by already having that Tinkercad piece started, yeah. or you could help people with that part. Um, but you could have a library of shapes that you can give to people. You can actually give it to them on Tinkercad as well. Mm -hmm. But I think um, you can go bunches of ways to say, I want to do this at a more advanced level because it's part of a project where they do need to write more description or where it's just, I want to make a graphic of a favorite shape. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the spatial reasoning thing is good. We touched on this earlier, but we talked a little bit about positive and negative spaces. Uh, that was a thing, that was a tie-in for me as a makerspace leader with the art teacher, because they did a lot of stuff with that in art and we're always looking for the next thing to do with it. So we would do vinyl stickers where they would use the, the negative material to take off the sticker and then reuse the like the inside part, you know, make two different things and say one's positive, negative. But this is a great way to teach that um, 
in a 3D way, which I think is pretty valuable. Yeah. Oh, and I want to just answer the one in the chat. If you want to make stamps that you're going to keep forever and not melt down, um, I would use a different thing. I'd look at Ecoflex, yeah. a similar price. You can get, um, it's like $35 for two big, like 16 ounce jars. So together that makes 32 ounces. Um, but any two part molding compound, and that's pourable. It takes four hours to set. Um, you need to use gloves with it, but other than that, nothing wrong with it. I wonder if you could do this with wax, if it would make a good stamp. Um, there are other two part compounds um, that you can do. We liked, we literally had to go with this one um, because we wanted to try the reusableness of it and we're just tired of throwing things out. Um, the other thing is there's a million different ways out there to make stamps. So it could be that you do this as the um, the prototyping phase and your kids, you know, make a quick 3D print and they make a stamp and they try it. They realize it doesn't quite work the way they want it to. They reiterate, they get a design that they want, and then you have them head over to the Fab Lab and use the laser cutter to cut some laserable stamp stock. Or they get out the linoleum carving knives and they, they make their final version. Or even uh, we have a uh, tutorial for this for using a Cricut to cut foam which works pretty much just as well when you're actually stamping with it. Um, so there's, all, there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, this one gets a lot more detail than cutting the foam sheet on the Cricut. Yeah. Cause there's no way you could get, like when you go back to the Amelia Earhart one, there's no way we could get that detail on the Cricut cause it has to put an actual knife blade in it. Um, but this one is, is really the most detail that we've gotten from any of these or the picture of Paula Hammond and the purple there, that's getting lots and lots of detail we cannot get with a simple uh, stamp. We were, we were considering ideas like um, making a longer one and putting on a roller so you could get like a roller stamp because it is very, very soft once it's, it's made. So then it might be made on something thinner on the bottom. Um, yeah. This is uh, coming right up on Monday. We're going to be doing these felt funsters. This is a adorable um, soft circuits project that has a lot of uh, iteration on expression and uh, social emergent, social emotional learning and other extensions you can do with this. Uh, we we love it and it's very um, low tech with a little high tech spin. And we'll be same time on Monday for that. This summer, we are running our Maker Project workshops. Uh, so you get to come in to MIT and hang with us and other wonderful educators and make projects. So we'll have a group of projects on each day that teach some fundamental skills in a group of uh, tools. So we have Make by Hand, so there's a lot of hands-on learning there. We do things with cardboard and prototyping, uh, some textile work, things like that. We might touch a little bit on shop tools. Uh, Tuesday, we get into our digital fabrication day where we're doing all your, your 3D printer, all those things together where doing some of the computer-based stuff with graphics kind of leads into the final product. Uh, electronics is on Wednesday, which has been really popular. We focus on doing electronics projects that are accessible that you can get parts for easily that when you break something, you don't lose the whole kit. Thursday, we do some physical computing. So we touch on uh, some of the things you would learn in a computer science course, we bring it into the real world with things like uh, Makey Makey or Microbit, uh, a little bit of uh, fun with Scratch and stuff like that. Uh, these are all single day workshops. You can sign up for one or all or three or two or whatever. Uh, and they're on campus. They're on our website. Yeah, I just put the link in there. What is it? $275 for one full day. So yep. six hours of project making and um, our Space is limited. We're not doing more than like 22 people yeah. in each one because we have to go to the size of the maker space. Yeah, uh, they they really they really are fun. And we're doing a longer program in the fall, which is great for. Oh, um, thought I had a slide for it for schools. Don't. Yeah, uh, that one is. If you look under our teacher PD, that is the master master making classroom. That's great for people who are makerspace leaders or coaches. Or um, so they're the ones working with the teachers to come up with projects like this. So you can tell a teacher, oh, we could do a stamp project and this is how you do it. So the teacher and you would collaborate on what the content is and uh, what the tools and materials are.